Flying Fox Fruits, and we at it again up in here. You know what this tree is? Well, I don't know. Well, I think I do actually. It's Plinia <laughs> edgeless. Isn't that simple? Plinia edgeless. I think that means it's edible. <laughs> and uh, this is one that's grafted from Larry Schatzer's tree, Our Kids Nursery Winter Garden. <laughs> Great man who I owe a lot to. He helped me build my collection. He helped me learn a bunch of awesome information out there. Come a little close to this tree. It was flowering at some point. Now this is one that is, it did have flowers on it and they'll flower and sometimes they won't hold. It's held fruit before and then they dropped. It's been grafted here and grafted here. It's hard to tell, but it is grafted twice. The tree's been grafted for a good seven or eight years and it probably took about five years to fruit flower I should say not fruit it did set fruit but they got pecked off by some critter but it took about five years from grafting and when I grafted it the scions I used were only about this big you see that about that big like a chopstick but if you really want to get one to fruit fast you should use a cutting like this these big dogs like these that would have flowered a little faster I bet so Plinia edulis is a rare fruit tree from Brazil. I've heard it's basically uh, like endangered in the wild, but in nurseries it's grown widely now. Um, there's varieties of this. From what I've heard, this variety that I got from Larry Schatzer was first introduced into the United States by Anto Antonio Luis Morschbacher, who um, gave them to Bill Whitman. And it's a nice superior variety, uh, makes a nice sized fruit, delicious. The flavor on these to me is unlike anything. I guess you could kind of say like a mango, kind of, or like a delicious Jabo mango papaya. Thick skin, big seed, but big fruit. This about that big, sometimes bigger, sometimes smaller. And uh, you don't really, you don't eat the skin, you don't eat the seed, but you eat that flesh out of the inside and it's delicious. It's gelatinous, it's sweet, a little bit of acid, when the fruits get ripe, sometimes they split. I've got pictures of them doing that at Larry Schatzer's house. He's one of the few people in Central Florida that has a fruiting tree. I've got several of them that have been flowering and setting fruits, but they get knocked off or they drop because we get so darn hot out here. And when they first start to flower and fruit, you're not going to get them to set all the time. It takes a minute for them to figure it out. When I say a minute, I mean three years maybe of flowering before they finally figure it out. And these aren't consistent bearers. Some years they just don't fruit as well as others. And that goes for Brazil, United States, Hawaii, wherever you want to do it. Come on. This over here is a white Java so, Cava. But look over here. This is another Plinia edulis. But you see the varieties. Look at the leaf on this one versus the leaf on that one. One of them's more oval shaped and rounded. One of them's elongated. This is the one from Bill Whitman and Larry Schatzer, Antonio Lewis Marshbacher. This is the one that I got from recently collecting in Brazil. Um, you know, I got it from another seed collector or some other guy. Uh, I got it from a friend who got it from another guy. So there's different varieties out there of all of these species is what makes this so fascinating and fun for us as collectors and growers and nurserymen, doesn't it? Look over here. This is another one that is of the same variety as that with the, the more um, oval shaped leaf. And this one hasn't flowered yet. This one has flowered and set fruit in a pot, but I let it dry out. And then as soon as I, as soon as it dried out in the pot, I said, man, it dropped a fruit, I better plant it. Now that I've planted it, it's taken a couple years off from flowering. That's what they do to you. Come on, walk this way. We're gonna show you my largest tree on the property. And um, I just love these trees. They're beautiful, even if they don't fruit. I just, ooh. They do fruit, but I wouldn't need them to fruit. Hold on, let's throw a knife real quick here. Let me see if I can get this first spot. I've been doing it all day. I'm gonna fail for them. Yeah! Oh, man. All right, I get two tries today. I get two tries. I was trying to show off. Well, I'm a knife thrower now, uh, state champ. There we go. Come on, let's go. State champ. Let me throw my holster over there. So yeah, let's take another look at these, man. Wow, Cam Booker. Look, it looks like it wants to flower. Nah, it's just leaves coming, I bet. But they'll tease you a lot where you think it's gonna flower. Look at the wound. A branch got ripped off and it's like 
healing. It'll like swallow the wound like a blob. I think there's another wound over here. This one's another wound here where it's swallowing it up. The tree got branched. They, they heal so well from branch injuries. Look at this one. Try not to get in the eye. I would say maybe over here. You see the bark peel on it? Look at that bark peel. Wow. And I notice a lot of these get little branches that die back, even sometimes some big branches. I think it's normal. Where the branches kind of self prune and like abort here and there. Normal. Don't worry about it. Now let's end it off with my big one. Go over here. Look at that thing. That's getting on a uh, 13, 14. I'd say that's 13. I don't know where's the best angle to show it. Maybe walk back over this way again. Walk over this way, maybe. You see, it's over the roof of my house. And then we'll walk up closer to show you the base of it. That's been flowering, but the chicken's probably knocking the fruit off. And like I said, these things are not known for being consistent bearers, in my experience. Look at this thing. This thing's gorgeous. I just love the tree, the bark, the peeling. Look at this. The multicolored bark peeling and patches. What more can you ask for? Maybe a little fruit. But these take, oh, from seed, anywhere between five years if you're lucky to 12 years or more, 15 years if you're not growing them right. So they're not what I would call a quick fruiter, but I've seen people that planted them out and got them to fruit quick. Maybe they got lucky or what, I don't get it. <clears throat> kind of looks like a flower, you're not gonna be able to tell. I'm looking for a flower on here, or maybe a green fruit. But before you know it, there'll be a big green fruit on there that's set and you're like, oh, I didn't even notice it. And then they're there and the longer you look, the longer it takes. It's like watching water boil. Don't even look at them. Let's end it off with this angel. Myrcearia glomerata. Has nothing to do with Plinia edulis. I just wanted to show you this tree's rare. Doesn't like the heat. I think it's flowering here somewhere. This one flowers a lot quicker, look, flowers. Hasn't set fruit yet. I don't think anyone in the United States has fruited it yet. I could be wrong. But I got a pair of them right here in the shade where it's cool, getting a draft from the house. So this is plenty of edgeless. I like to graft it back onto its own rootstock, but I have grafted it onto Sabara before, which was unbelievable. Given that the fruit looks so much different, the leaf is a lot different. I was really surprised that it grafted onto Sabara, given that I had failed so many times in the past, but I saw guys in Taiwan doing it. I started doing it. And I've got trees out there that I've sold. I haven't kept up with them, but they were growing great when I did sell them. If anybody's got a grafted tree from me on Sabro Rootstock, comment below. Let me know how it's doing, how it's holding up. I've heard they do good on Sabro Rootstock, but I've also heard that they can just have delayed incompatibility and die out of nowhere. I don't know what to believe. I, I couldn't tell you, but I've, I like to graft them back onto their own roots. Um, if you come over this way, I'll end this with one last thing. Show them that star fruit while we hold. This is like pause. Just you take a look at that star fruit. I'm gonna run and grab some. That's a flying tongue star fruit. Hey, 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 you can pick it off, baby. Pick it off and hold it in your hand there. I gotta grab some. Nice. Alright, I'm back. Looks like a good fruit there. Let me see that fruit. We're gonna we're gonna cut this bad boy up and eat it. Nothing to do with Carambola, except they're both rare. Uh, the Kambuka. Carambola has nothing to do with Kambuka, in my opinion. Except they're both delicious fruits that kind of turn yellow. Anyway, this right here is Plinia Klausa, or I forget how to say it. I think it's like Klausa, C-L-A-U-S-A, -S or Klausia. It's a rare, Eugenia. I said, did I say Eugenia or Plinia? It's a rare Plinia. Plinia Clausia or Clausea. I don't know how to say it. It's C-L-A-U-S-E-A -S -E or something. I grafted this on the Kambuka. And I think that's probably the first time you're going to see that in the uh, history of uh, rare fruit growing. Look at the new growth coming out. It's doing quite well. So I forget the exact name on it, but it's a rare Plinia that I knew would take because the fruit looked just like it. The leaf looked just like it. So uh, just tell me where you can see one of these grafted somewhere else, because I hadn't seen it. Plinia edulis, versatile tree. Can use it as a rootstock for some of these rare varieties. Think about Plinia inflata. Think about Plinia salticola. Yeah. All right, y'all. Flying fox fruits, rare fruit all day, baby.